I apologise unreservedly for the offence that it has caused up and down the country, and I apologise for the impression that it gives. But I repeat, Mr Speaker, that I have been repeatedly assured since these allegations emerged that there was no party and that, and that no COVID rules were broken, and that is what I have been repeatedly assured. Well, to discuss all of this, we can cross now live to London and talk to our correspondent there, Benedict Pavio. Uh, Benedict, uh, what's the latest on this story? I understand the Prime Minister is still speaking in the House of Commons. Well, the latest on the story is that we now have an apology from the British Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, one that was made unreservedly, he says, uh, in the House of Commons. Uh, this video uh, that was actually uh, published and released by ITN News last night uh, came very late. And interestingly, no ministers were available at all, which is highly unusual, to go on radio or TV shows, uh, news programmes today, uh, to uh, respond to this. So the first response we've got is now from the Prime Minister himself, uh, who said that he understands the offence uh, that has been given and the impression that has been given uh, about this Christmas party last December by this video emerging. So the video is allegedly uh, was filmed four days after the alleged party in Downing Street. Uh, the Prime Minister said that he was sickened by this. Uh, he said this in the Prime Minister's questions moments ago in the House of Commons. He added uh, that he still maintains that there is no, there was no party and that no COVID rules were broken. And indeed, before the video emerged, for one week now, we've had the Prime Minister and his ministers assuring us that there are no rules had been broken, indeed maintaining that there was no Christmas party. Why does this matter? Because London, the British capital, was under very strict uh, rules not to have Christmas parties uh, and not to hold parties indoors. So it reinforces the impression that there is one rule for government and an elite, uh, a governing elite, uh, and another for the rest of the British population. And, Benedict, there's been talk that... Uh... Boris Johnson may introduce new, me new measures as soon as today or tomorrow to combat the latest surge of COVID-19. But I suppose the question now is, does his government still have enough public trust to guarantee people will want to follow the rules after all of this? Public trust is one of the questions and moral authority uh, is one of the other many questions. It has to be said that there was palpable anger uh, in the House of Commons uh, moments ago. Palpable anger not just from the opposition MPs. Indeed, uh, the Labour leader Keir Starmer says the PM quote, is taking the public for fools, while the, uh, a smaller uh, opposition party, the Scottish National Party, actually called for Boris Johnson's resignation and for him to go. Um, the fact of the matter is that COVID is no laughing matter. There are 50,000 new cases uh, a day, uh, 149 deaths uh, just yesterday reported. And yes, the Cabinet, we are told, and there are reports, they're not confirmed, uh, that they will be discussing a potential move this afternoon to Plan B, so much stricter COVID measures in England, including possibly uh, working from home. And the palpable anger is not just in the House of Commons. It is absolutely up and down the country, in pubs, in shops, uh, everywhere. When people a year ago were being asked to say goodbye to their loved ones via iPads or phones uh, because they were respecting the rules, not going to hospitals um, and not making that physical uh, contact with their loved ones, their fathers, their mothers, their brothers, their sisters. Uh, so there is real anger here. The question is, is this a tipping point for the Prime Minister? Uh, that is far from sure. But really, really crisis uh, problems with credibility today uh, on this. How long it will continue? Difficult to say. Benedict Pavio in London, thanks very much indeed. And